Welcome to CT Small Business Toolkit, where small business innovators and influencers share the advice that will help you turn your idea into a business and your business into a success. Let's get started. Our guest this week on CT Small Business Toolkit is Professor Samuel Bacharach. He teaches organizational behavior at Cornell University and also is head of the Bacharach Leadership Group. He's an expert consultant to Fortune 500 companies, and he's the author of the new book, The Agenda Mover. And, Professor, thanks very much for your time today. Thank you very much. Well, the Agenda Mover basically looks at how leaders of organizations, and primarily businesses, uh, is able to get their stated goals accomplished, and there are a lot of different ways to do that. Talk about, first of all, why you believe this book was necessary. I think this book is necessary very much because of its title. And and also, I like to point out subtitle, in that it's the Agenda Mover when your good idea is not enough. I think it's necessary because the time has come to demythologize what leadership is really about. We have spent the last 15, 20 years creating a leadership industry, and there are more leadership books out there that we know what to do. But in the final analysis, leadership is about the capacity to move an agenda, whether you're an individual entrepreneur, whether you're someone pursuing your career, or whether you're a CEO, you're going to be judged on whether you move an agenda. Think about it for a moment. We talk about charisma and we talk about vision, but is that what we really remember the great leaders for? We remember great leaders, yes, for their charisma, but because they had the capacity to move agendas and get something done. And I think that that is the litmus test of leadership. So my attitude is everything is fine and good, but if you don't have the skills to move agendas, then you're just not leading. You're hallucinating. You're not driving for results. I mean, uh, so, and good ideas are not simply enough. You can be the best entrepreneur in the world. You know, I, I've been at Cornell for years. I've seen many as a brilliant student. You know, you can be a brilliant student, brilliant ideas, etc. Ask yourself what some of the leaders have in common. Ask yourself what Zuckerberg and Gates and, and Jobs had in common. What they had in common is the capacity to move in general. These were not the most brilliant techies out there, but they were the smartest agenda movers. So what does that look like? We obviously have good examples, as you mentioned, from Jobs and and Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg. But uh, when it comes to running a a small business or or creating one or running an existing company, if you come in as the CEO, how does that look like uh, on a day-to-day basis? That's a superb question because, again, what, what you're actually saying is that leadership occurs in the context of a business. It's not an amorphous notion. So if you're running a small business, you're doing. You're leading in the context of your business. If you're a chairman of, if you're a CEO of a major Fortune 500, you're leading in the context of that business. So let's take a bigger picture. Right? Let's take a look at it for a moment. You know, let's start start from the top and deal with the big businesses. Take a look at big companies today and ask yourself why so many of them get stuck. Many get stuck because leaders don't have the capacity to move agendas in these complex environments. Organizations, that networks, their turf. They're creating multiple products. They're doing bot bridges and acquisitions. And in that context, there is a massive political and complex terrain internally that leaders have to maneuver at all levels to move an agenda. So you may be a brilliant engineer with a great idea. It's working for a major company. I can't tell you how many companies I've worked with. I've worked with the engineers. They're brilliant. You know, we've got more MIT, Stanford graduates. You know what to do if in a room. But what do they do with those ideas? How do they get the support for the ideas? How do they move the ideas up the ladder? So essentially, they've got to really get support for where they're going, convince people to join what they're doing. And that is exactly, think about it for a moment, that is exactly, that is exactly the challenge of someone leading a small business. Even that's the challenge of someone starting it. So whether you think about it, whether you're pitching ideas to a, a, to a VC firm, whether you've been given for support at that primary stage, what you're trying to do is mobilize support. Now, when you're running a small business, at the same time, what you're trying to do is mobilize support that allows your business to grow. You're looking for how to create the allies, how to, how to if you will, how do you, get, how do you get the buy-in, how do you move it ahead. It's not simply the ideas of your business, but it's your capacity to get support, get coalitions to support your business both internally and externally. Simply put, A lot of the successful leaders at the corporate level and at the small business level are politically smart. They have a core degree of political competence, and that's what agenda moving is about. 
I think you mentioned something there. You said many good things, but one thing you said right there at the end, I think, is is going to be helpful to clarify to people. And that is there might be this notion out there that, yes, you have more power. You can possibly do more things if you're the head of a big corporation or a bigger business. And there's the, the assumption out there there's more politics. But you're pointing out there that you have to have the ability to deal with all these things, even if you're a one man mom and pop shop, given all the people you've got to deal with. Absolutely. And, and, and just think about it. Think about it. This whole idea. We often talk about doing your homework as you're moving ahead. Think about a very small notion of what that means. To me, doing your homework is anticipating where other people are coming from. Uh, you know, you're going to go out there as a small business person and you're trying to get support. Even, let's say you have some part time people working for you, they're splitting their time between your business and another business. Or let's say you're trying to recruit someone when, in fact, you don't, they don't have, they, they, you don't have the resources to get the best people, but you've got the vision to make get the best people around, around your ideas. So what you've got to do is focus on what's their agenda, where they're coming from. That's the exact same challenge a CEO faces when he or she is trying to get a division to do something different. And they're, they're trying to win people over. So the first thing is you've got to anticipate where people are coming from. Then you've got to get this whole idea of coalition mindset, what I talk about. You know, we often talk about winning people to our side. What we want to do is give people a sense that we're coalescing with them. And what does it mean to call, get them to buy into your ideas? How do you establish the credibility? How do you justify where you're moving? All these are fundamental skills that are needed at all levels of the organization. And you know what? I, I come from a, you know, a, a, a sort of a... a in, in, in an entrepreneur background. I mean, my, my father, for years, had a, a welding truck, right? He'd go around Brooklyn driving his welding truck, etc. And he never quite succeeded in building it into a business. And I remember why, why, why it never quite grew up. And I always wondered as a kid, how come we didn't have a big welding factory? The reason is that in a real sense, he even reflected like what he spent all his time simply focusing on the one narrow thing that he did. What he didn't do it's, and, I, and I love my father, did a great job, put me through college. Whole world. What we didn't do is we didn't get other people on board because we didn't have the resources. What he failed to realize, and he actually told me this late in life, is that winning people is not simply a question of resources. It's also about your capacity to convince them that your agenda is consistent with their agenda. And, you, and that is a primary challenge that small businesses that want to grow constantly face. You take a look at it, a lot of those small businesses, a lot of the great entrepreneurs, that is what they're good about. That is what they're great about. That's what they know how to do. And that's what they have in common with the great CEOs. As you point out in the book, uh, Professor Bacharach, uh, we're in a situation right now, we've really always been that way in the business world, that if you're not changing, if you're not growing, if you're not improving, and you think you're standing still, you're probably actually declining. But one of the things uh, that you also point out is that there's a natural aversion to change. And you point out three specific fears that often arise when new ideas and new plans get put into place. The fear of failure, the fear of the new, and the fear of turf encroachment. People just get comfortable with the way things are being done and the way things, quote unquote, have always been done. So how do you conquer those? In the book, in the Agenda Mover, and also a lot of the training that we do, you know, one of the things that I, I, we come across, I remember we had this, it's very interesting, we had this retreat uh, for a group of business people in, in, in Jersey with, with, with our group, the Backrack Leadership Group, and it seems to me that the main anxiety was not simply the resistance of other people, not just other people's fears, but also the very fear that sometimes entrepreneurs and leaders themselves have. So when you talk about the fear of failure, that fear isn't simply on the, on the whole notion of the whole, on the side of the people you're trying to convince. It's also our own fears. When you talk about the fear of the new, we also have a fear of the new, even though we're leading. And if we're worried about fear of turf, we're also worried about that. We're worried about giving up our turf. So the idea is simply also to convince ourselves and others. But the trick is how do you convince others? The fear of the new. My whole notion is direct yourself squarely at that fear. If they fear the new, show them in an empirical way what the risk components are and how you can overcome that risk component. If they have this whole idea that, that, as you said before, 
the, the, the fear of failure. Give them the probability. Of course, there'll be failure. Recognize the fear of failure. Don't deny it. One of the mistakes leaders make do all the time, and our political leaders do it all the time, is we celebrate only success without warning failures, and then we lose our legitimacy. Recognize the fear of failure and put it a bit in, put it a bit in perspective. And this whole idea of fear of turf as if you encroach on them. How many times have you been in a situation where you want someone to cooperate with you and they feel that you're stepping on their own turf? Show them how there's room for both of you. Now, these are specific skills that people can be trained in. The problem is with a lot of these things is we sort of assume, oh, I know how some of your listeners are reacting, saying, oh, yeah, I do that. But do you really? Do you actually go through each of the steps methodically and, and, and actually work this out. My whole point is when we talk about leaders doing their homework, these are the type of things they actually need to be trained on. And that's what we try to point out in the book, and that's what we try and do point on in our training. Professor, unfortunately, we've run out of time. Thank you, sir, very much for a fascinating discussion. I think the precepts in this book are going to help a lot of people, especially with a faster and faster changing business world. Thank you for your time and congratulations on the book. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Professor Samuel Bacharach teaches organizational behavior at Cornell University. He also heads up the Bacharach Leadership Group. His brand new book is The Agenda Mover, When Your Good Idea Is Not Enough. I'm Greg Corumbus reporting for CT Small Business Toolkit. Thanks for joining us on CT Small Business Toolkit. Be sure to visit our website, ct.walterskluwer.com and follow at CT Corporation on Twitter. We'll see you next time on CT Small Business Toolkit.